Good morning, everybody. Uh, almost afternoon. I had to reflect on the time here for a second. My name is Erin Kopech, and I'm with Higher Level. And thank you for tuning in to our High Notes webinar program. Uh, we're switching things up a little bit this month uh, with an 11 o'clock start time, kind of playing around with um, times and popular times of day. Um, so if you had feedback on that, we'd love to hear that. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to talk with you a little bit about what you can expect today, some housekeeping things. I'm super excited to have Shana Allen back with us. Uh, she is the CEO of SM Consulting. Um, and today we're going to hear about uh, managing the multi generational workforce. Uh, Shana and I were talking right before we kicked off, and I think I have a lot to learn today. Excited to hear the history about the di history around the different generations and just you know, give us some good insights on the different uh, generations into the workforce nowadays. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, really looking forward to having that uh, information as even internally higher level, we do have um, some unique generations and a diverse workforce. So before we get started, this call will last less than an hour. Uh, we'll look into wrap up around um, an hour and we'll give you some time for Q&A. So at the end of the presentation, um, you can use your questions or your chat box to type in any questions that you have to Shana and I'll make sure I share that with her towards the end of the presentation. Uh, we do want to 100% hear from you. You know, this presentation was put together for your benefit. And so think about those questions throughout and let's make this as hands-on as possible. Um, before we get started, I want to just share a little bit of a bio about Shana. She was here with us last year, um, came back this year and looking for a great really turnout today. Um, so Shana Allen, uh, she has experience with human resource professionals, partnering with managers um, and other people leaders with challenges such as productivity, retention, turnover, conflict resolution, and communication. Uh, with over 22 years as an HR professional, she has firsthand experience, knowledge um, in the day and the life of HR professionals. Um, this has led her really to have deep experience on leadership development, high performance team building and building strategy. Leveraging the lessons she learned, uh, Shana believes that a healthy work culture is a must for all companies and is attained by creating and developing leaders and seeding nurturing teams. Through her challenges and fun workshops, masterminds and one-on-one -on -one coaching, she brings curiosity, innovation, productivity to a higher level. She also is a certified coach and a speaker of the John Maxwell team as well as certified DISC consultant. Thank you again for joining us and I pass it off to you. All right, thank you, Erin. And I'm really excited to be here and bring this to you. Um, I was talking to Erin about how I just learned a lot as well um, in trying to get this together. So thank you so much for attending and let's get started. So as Erin said, we're, we, we're talking about generations and today for the first time, there are four, five, and some of you may even have six generations working together uh, in the workplace. And as leaders, we really need to go where our people are and not try to make them come to where we are. So if just say, for example, you're a Generation X, uh, you could lead somebody that was a Generation X with those things that have shaped you in your generation. But when you have other generations in the workforce, it's very important to try to understand them and respect the way that they work in the workforce and the, the um, things that they bring to the table for the company. And even if you don't agree, even if you don't really understand why they do what they do, uh, it, is, it, is, it is really important to, to go to them and collaborate with them in the ways that they do that. <clears throat> Obviously, that doesn't mean that you do it only their way. It just means to try to see that value that they bring, um, and regardless of your own differences. So today, we're going to talk about generations, and uh, traditionalists is one of them. They were born uh, before 46, 1946, and they're about 79 to 90 years old. Now, I know that we hear baby boomers, and they talk about just baby boomers in general, but there's a big uh, 
a time span within a baby boomer. So I've broke that down a little bit to the earlier baby boomers and the uh, younger baby boomers because there are differences there. So that older generation is about 70 to 78. The baby boomer twos that I put in there, which is that younger generation, they're 60 to 69. Um, we'll talk about generation X, which are 45 to 59 currently. And then those millennials, they're also uh, uh, said as wise, generation wise. Um, they're 30 to 44 currently. And then your Gen Zs, they were, they are now 29 to 14. I also added the alphas. Now, I know the alphas are not quite yet in that workforce, but it won't be long that they're going to start to trickle in in the next couple of years. And so I'm just going to give you a little information about that. Um, if you're going to be leading in a couple of years, it might be good information for you to start thinking about. So. So let's look at how many of each generation are in the workforce currently. Now, traditionalists make up about 2% of the workplace population. The Gen Zs make up about 6.1% of the population. Millennials make up 38.6. Um, they are the biggest group that are in our workforce now. Baby boomers now, and these, these are both of them combined, they're at 18.6%. And then your Gen X is 34.8. So they're the next biggest generation currently in the workforce. Now, I do want to um, share with you, there may be a little bit of differences of what you've seen in, in, in years and ages of generations, but they're very close. And then also these, these percentages are approximate. Okay, so let's look at the, the traditionalists. Now, they were also called the silent generation, and they were shaped by the Great Depression, World War II, and this created um, them to be more of a, a rationing generation where they saved a lot. Um, they also had a traditional families where both parents and children lived in the same household. So it was more traditional in that way. There were fixed, very defined fixed gender roles. Uh, rock and roll was the start of their generation. So that's when things really started to happen with rock and roll. Uh, slinkies, we all know slinkies, but it kind of started in their era. Um, they had Elvis and Marilyn Monroe and James Dean and those kind of uh, people that they looked up to for uh, in the Hollywood rim of that. The automobile was was fairly new to them, so big deal for them. And they communicated through the radio. And they are tra tradi traditionalists are the smallest percentage of workers in our workforce. They are the oldest working generation in today's professional environment. They bring a wealth of information and knowledge and experience with them. Um, we want to learn as much as possible from this generation while they're still in the workforce, because there's going to be a time when they're going to they're 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 starting to to go out of the workforce due to the age. So it's critical to know and understand their preferred way of communicating and leading and working. And they really uh, motiv are motivated by respect and recognition. That's very important to them. They uh, need to be respected and recognized and appreciated for the knowledge because it brings so much value to our uh, corporations. Um, they're really great at, as being strategic mentors. So they can fill positions, but they're really good at being uh, mentors for our younger generation. And so even some organizations are creating mentorship programs in their succession planning to continue employing the trad traditionalists and the baby boomers as well, who want to continue to work. Another great thing is they're loyal and they're reliable. They they're, have a great focus and wonderful experiences. And so with all of this, it's easier for them to design strategies to solve problems. 
So they might need to be put in those more strategic roles. And we know they're probably going to show up every day because they have a really strong work ethic. And because of this great value, uh, they bring uh, with them, uh, with this great value, we need to assist them with some of those things that they're not uh, maybe as good at, which is technology, maybe those new processes um, as well. So we need to provide that flexible work-life balance when we're leading them uh, that they're looking for so we can continue to keep them in the workforce. Um, most of them are probably looking for part-time work or specific days, so just honor that and soak up the benefits that you'll receive from them. They love traditionists, love face-to-face -face communication. They grew up with, unlim with limited communication technology, and they prefer to connect in person when possible. If you can't connect in person, then pick up the phone and call them. Um, they like a personal touch too. So um, this is really important if you're meeting with them for the first time, or maybe you're having a meeting. Um, try not to get to business right away. Kind of get to know each other. Talk to each other more in a personal realm first. Um, when meeting with them, formal protocol is appreciated. Um, they really like introductions. Uh, if they don't know who they're ha they're meeting with, they they like in to be introduced in a formal way. Um, another way, like in a meeting, uh, their protocol is they ask them for um, if they want something to drink or other people if they want something to drink. That's a big deal for them in meetings. Um, they're going to be looking for an agenda. Um, so if you could send that ahead of time, that would be great, and that would really help them prepare for that meeting. And um, these are important for everyone, but the traditionalists really respond especially well, well to those type of protocols. Now, their leadership is based on chain of command and creating contingency plans. They don't like indecisiveness. They don't, they really do not like disrespect or profanity and poor dress. Dress is very important to them. I was thinking about this when I was reading, when I was uh, kind of looking at that. Um, they, um, when I'm traveling in the airport, they're dressed very formally. It's, they dress up to do that. And that is just so different than what most people do these days. And I thought that that was really, uh, 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 it's really true about them. Um, so appreciate their sense of formality. If you're going to meet with them, keep in mind that they have that dress uh, preference and maybe don't wear the jeans and the sweaters, especially if this is the first time you've met with them. Wear something more traditionally professional. Um, and when you address them, do it in a more formal way, such as sir or ma'am or madam. Um, again, the more professional protocol you are, uh, that you use with them, especially in the beginning of that relationship, it'll set you up for success when you're working with them, when you're leading them. Their communication style is a direct reflection of their generation. So traditionalists feel that no good is no news is good news. So that means they're not they're not the generation that requires that regular consistent feedback. You know, they they're at work, so they believe in getting the job done and getting it done right. And that's just what they do when they're at work. Um, they value hard work, duty before fun, and they adhere to the rules. Um, if feedback is needed, do it in a formal way. Uh, don't just walk up to them in the hallway and talk to them um, about something that needs to be addressed um, between you and them as the leader. Um, tell them if there's something wrong, really do it in a private setting. If there's an issue, an, a performance issue or something like that that needs to be addressed, set up a meeting and let them uh, and meet with them in a private setting. <laughs> they may be slower on their feet, but they still have really agile minds and uh, have plenty of experience. 
So even if they aren't as tech, tech savvy as the younger generations, which they're not, and we know that, uh, they bring a unique skill and experience to many jobs that younger workers can't even touch. They can't even duplicate that. And this wealth of knowledge to you, your departments, um, your company is priceless. So I want to talk to you about the next generations, and that's the baby boomers and the uh, millennials and the Gen Xs. And I want to show you a few short videos that really kind of explain that. I think some of you will be able to uh, understand and um, realize that they're really true. <laughs> You'll really see this. Hold on just a minute. Mm. Sorry about this, guys. I hit the wrong button and they just keep going. But I think that these are things that we can really relate to today. I'll show you one more. Okay, so that uh, is just a, a quick glimpse of what we probably have all experienced uh, before, and we can definitely relate to that. All right, let me get me back on track. Okay, so we are going to talk about the baby boomers now. And um, I just wanted to show you those. I thought those were really uh, funny and very relatable. So the baby boomers, and we're talking about that first generation, uh, they were shaped by the Cold War, Woodstock, the rise of the teenagers. They were also shaped by the Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Movement, and Watergate. Now, they were also in those family, uh, traditional family settings as well. Um, the Frisbee was a big thing that they uh, had. Um, John Lennon and Mick Jagger and Bob Dylan, uh, those were the, the musicians they were listening to. And so uh, they were affected by that. TV, that was a big thing for them in the generation. And they, a lot of them listened to the record players. That was like their one of their main sources of music. <clears throat> Now, baby boomers are a little less formal than the traditionalists. Baby boomers represent a generation with a strong work ethic, 
uh, valuing hierarchy and structure in organizations. Um, respecting, as a, as a leader, respecting their experience and knowledge fosters effective communication. Boomers were graded in school to work well with others. Uh, this created a group of people who are optimistic and future oriented. And they believe that they can do anything they set their minds to as long as they work hard. Uh, but they have certain expectations of their managers to ensure they perform at the highest quality of level. And they are driven. They believe that I'm at my workplace for eight to 10 hours if necessary, and I'll take work home if needed. Um, we saw that in the video where the boomer was still at work at 515 on Friday and still trying to get a hold of another coworker and kind of upset that they weren't answering their phones because it was only 515. Uh, so very, very uh, rely, re relatable. Okay. <clears throat> So they are more formal, like the traditionalist we saw uh, in the video. Uh, we saw that at the, when the baby boomer answered the phone in a more professional way, stating her name and just being very cordial to the person on the phone. Um, boomers need mutual respect. They grew up being reminded to give respect and they expect it in return. And they are going to pay attention when you speak, but they expect you your full attention as well. So that's really important when we talk about collaboration and learning this about each other in the workforce. Um, these are very important things to know to be able to collaborate with our generations. Boomers want to talk face to face. Personal conversation uh, means more than the less familiar and less personal method. Of emails and text messages. They would rather have that personal conversation. And they, again, they prefer uh, in person communication. So if you have something more formal you need to talk to them about, don't send them a message or simply just hand a piece of paper with the information on it. They're going to expect you to talk to them about what types of behaviors, maybe if that's what you're addressing, that um, aren't working out in their daily routine. Um, if, you, if it's about their performance, then they definitely want to sit down and have that one-to-one. -one. Now, they can be a little negative on feedback. So when you're uh, communicating with them, make sure that you're saying it in a more constructive way when you're having that conversation with them. Um, also, boomers want to play the game. Work has always been structured. For their generation, so reward the de their dedication with incentives and perks. They're somewhat like the traditionalists. They value recognition in the form of job titles and money rather than direct feedback. Um, they are a generation of people who work to get ahead, so instead of a vacation, they might appreciate a bonus or a promotion more than um, than um, and the pay <clears throat> and just make them feel appreciated that is really uh, what motivates them um, performance reviews since they aren't they don't need all that heat feedback as some of the, our other generations um, once a year is usually sufficient for them uh, I do want to tell you that hit boomers are history buffs so if you have any uh, company history that you can share with them they'll appreciate that and they'll really want to know that and it will add to your overall work experience and um, with them when, when, you're, when your teams are collaborating together and they kind of have a understanding of the company. They're also team players, but they do want personal attention. Um, teamwork and meetings can help boomers to stay connected with their coworkers and with management, but they also expect professional one-to-one -one feedback without distraction. So you're probably going to need to have both of those for them. Let them know that, they'll, that they're going to get to work hard and they're going to be uh, counted on for their quality because that's what's really important to them. And they want to have those really great results. Uh, most importantly, make sure they, they know that they are valued in their workforce. 
And they're not only hardworking individuals, they're one that will strive to continue to grow, they want to learn, and they want to outperform other members of the staff um, as long as you let them. Okay, our baby boomers too, that's that younger generation. And they're considered, you may have heard, Generation Jones. They were like the teens in the 70s, kind of sandwiched between the baby boomers and the Gen Xs. Um, they came of age during a time of profound societal change, and their experiences were heavily influenced by the culture and the political shifts that were going on in the 80s, in the, I mean, in the 60s and in the 70s. Um, <clears throat> So there, things were a little different for them. Uh, those early boomers um, had <clears throat> major icons to look up to, but the Generation Jones group, they were too young to remember uh, the Woodstock and the I Have a Dream speech. They did watch their over, o older siblings, which were those older group of baby boomers, benefit from an era of prosperity. Um, the early baby boomers had idealistic and opt an optimistic outlook. This was different for the Generation Jones. Um, these late boomers entered the workforce doing economic downturn, when shape, when, which shaped their attitudes toward job security and financial stability. The generation, this generation, experienced the backlash of an ec economy was falling really dramatically. Uh, life at home was different now than those more, more traditional settings that the early boomers experienced. More homes were being forced into having two working parents because there was changes in the economy and, and um, <clears throat> so they were now two parents were working. And unfortunately, divorce was on the rise in the Generation Jones as they entered their uh, generation into their formative years. So this caused um, teens to spend more time working independently and caring for themselves. And as that economy just kept nosediving, fuel prices were spiking, the oil embargo impacted the nation, and so those job opportunities that the, ba the earlier baby boomers experienced were now shrinking. Um, and Generation Jones decided they weren't going to put their kids in the same situation. So families were beginning to shrink in size. Um, the pill became available. So Birth control and family planning were easier than it was in the past. Jen Jones had to become more independent. They had to learn to fight for their future. They understood that nothing would be handed to them. Um, and so they knew that they had to put their head down and work hard, and they needed to develop methods standing out. Career growth was important. <clears throat> Uh, was important, but the main focus was simply on keeping their jobs. Uh, there was fierce competition for job stability, and um, they earned that name uh, because they were constantly striving to keep up with the Joneses or Jonesing for something more. So I know we've probably all heard keeping up with the Joneses. Well, that's where it came from. If you didn't know that, uh, I thought that was very interesting. Um, so their error of uh, time was there was tr there was a lot going on in that era. Uh, there was social change, the civil rights movement, the women's liberation um, movement, and the sexual revolution. And these cultural shifts really affected had an impact on them with their values and their attitudes and their relationships. And so. Um, there was a widespread of workplace computers in the late 80s. And so you look at uh, Gen X as having more digital experience, but Gen Jones also probably had um, the digital experience as well because they were later in those baby boomer years. Um, and, and computers were being used in the workplace. And so they were, they, were, they were probably really more likely the first adapters of that new technology. <clears throat> so in 
so they uh, want to work hard. Um, so when uh, you're leading them, they like to work hard and long to reach those in uh, reach those goals that are ingrained in them from their um, from their generation. They are more independent and self starters, so they're fine working in teams, but give them the opportunity to work individually. <clears throat> they're used to taking care of themselves. And so remember this, this is important when you're leading them and uh, collaboration, you want that collaboration to happen. They may hesitate to ask for help. So you might have to encourage them in that area. Um, they really uh, have self-worth in their career. Um, and this is very important to these boomers. Many boomers chose to work past the age of 65. And even though they're eligible for retirement, you want to keep them engaged. If they want to work, you want to keep them engaged. Again, like the traditionalists, they have a lot to bring to the table. Um, just be flexible. Uh, flexibility is a key component of employee engagement. Um, there's companies now that are actually creating programs for this. Um, there was a, a firm surveyed that two thirds of baby boomers wanted flexible hours. So yes, they wanna stay in that workforce, but they also, um, they also want to be, uh, have some flexibility as well. Um, there's federal government agencies that what they're doing is they're offering a phased retirement option to employees uh, who wish to work part-time uh, they draw, so what they do is they, they draw a part-time salary, they take partial retirement benefits, and they must spend 20% of their work time mentoring coworkers. And I think it's great that companies are, are using um, in their succession planning to use these older generations with so much experience to mentor those upcoming coworkers or upcoming leaders. Another thing, CVS hires Snowbird, employees who choose, uh, who choose work in the company's Florida stores in the winter months and then in the northern uh, uh, stores during the summer. I thought that was real interesting um, and smart to do. Now also baby boomers typically like to work in office more than those younger generations. Um, this, is imp this, is, this is something that was uh, seemed interesting. They make decisions rationally. So they kind of, instead of those emotional decision makings, they do it with, uh, they're, they're more rational and they're more objective to objective strategies. Uh, they believe authority equals experience. So many boomers associate authority as coming from experience. So collaborating when you have younger generations as their bosses that can that's why that poses a problem because they may have more experience um, and they're asked to collaborate with a younger generation and they don't quite see that um, the benefit of that because they don't have as much experience as them healthcare becomes a bigger priority for um, for baby boomers so they're looking for certain things in their health care plan. Um, they're lo looking to get most out of their health care plans and benefits before they're going to actually go into retirement. Uh, they're seeking ways to help uh, to have things that can give them a healthier life and reduce their risk for heart disease. So there's in factors that are important to the baby boomers and traditionalists especially. Uh, they want a close relationship with their primary care physicians, pharmacy tools to manage the cost of growing a uh, list of prescriptions that they may be having, um, heart disease management, and wellness programs are important. Then, of course, quality care and cost. Okay, so next we're going to talk about the Generation X. They are uh, known as the latchkey kids. They were uh, around, they were shaped by the AIDS epidemic. The dot-com boom, the end of the Cold War, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, 
they were the ones that had that introduction to PCs more. Um, they early mobile tech, their generation was when we were starting that mobile tech. Um, divorce was really on the rise in this generation. Some things that they, uh, singers and, and Hollywood people that they had were influenced by were Michael Jackson and Madonna or Cobain. Um, remember the Walkman? So Walkman was one of them. Uh, internet, that's when everything started to really uh, get going and it was the beginning, but it was something so really new. And those gaming consoles, oh my goodness, I remember, I don't know if you guys remember if you were in that generation, but we had this like blue screen and there was a cursor on this side and cursor on the other side. And there was like this little ball that would bounce off the bottom and bounce over to the side and you had to take your cursor and hit it with your cursor to the other person that you were playing. That was like one of the first gaming consoles. And then Atari came in as well, right? Um, now, Gen X, they're the ones who started to question authority and initiated the concept of work-life balance. Really, really unlike their career-driven boomer parents. Um, you know, these Gen Xs, they want it and they want it now. Uh, they're all about immediate feedback. Constant feedback for them should be routine for this generation. Don't beat around the bush. They want you to be direct with them. So um, during those collaboration time, just get to the point. Be direct. Um, they, they, they're really looking for that, and they're looking for continual feedback. They really value freedom and choice. As our world is moving more and more towards telecommuting, give them the freedom to choose, if you can, uh, working from office and home. And they're going to be, I think, the generation that really is interested in the hybrid because they do like that kind of more traditional face-to-face, -face, but they also like to have flexibility and, and not have to drive to do that commuting every single day. They're going to constantly seek feedback from you if, as a leader, as their manager. And if it's not provided, they're going to think that they're doing a bad job. So it's really important that if they're not, you're just not giving feedback because they're doing a great job, you might want to do that, give them that feedback. Um, and so they're kind of really the complete opposite of the traditionalist in that way. Um, Generation X experienced analog and digital worlds. Um, so they are often seen as adaptable and self-reliant and they prefer efficient communication that respects their time. Um, be straightforward and provide concise communication. Now they are okay with the email. Uh, they're good, so they're kind of you know that balance there where okay we can do some digital and email. Um, but they can also do, they also enjoy the face-to-face -face interactions, like I was saying, um, and those digital, digital channels that more and more we're, we're using now. Um, they they um, are really, they value a results-driven approach as well. Mm -hmm. Generation X is kind of like the middle generation. They kind of act as a bridge between those button-down, but hard-working baby boomers, and then the creativity and the purpose of the millennials and the Gen Z. Um, they're highly, Generation X is highly invested in their jobs, but they do want that balance. And so they're only going to be loyal if those needs are being met. They have less interest in the purpose, um, kind of like our newer or younger generations but they are really equally committed to receiving open and direct feedback around their work. As a leader, um, don't force them to act in certain ways or constantly act for status reports. They want you to trust them. They want to feel trusted. And you can do that. Just give them a little more lack, but let them know that you're there to support them if they, if, uh, they need that. They want you to be honest. They want you to provide accurate feedback. 
let them know how they're doing, listen to them by collecting their feedback, um, respect their time. You know, these Generation Xs, they are respect, they are big on time. They pay a lot of attention to that. So don't force them to attend pointless meetings. Sometimes people are put into meetings and they're really, they don't have a lot of input to be in that meeting. So think about that when you're, when you're uh, scheduling meetings with Gen X. Um, they, really, we, they really want you to provide opportunities for learning. Um, they are very experienced, but remember, they still have several years to be in the workforce. So uh, they wanna, they're very open to learning. Um, they want training opportunities. So maybe train them around their roles, something to make them better at the role that they're in, or maybe, um, maybe they need to help with some management skills, things like that, because they are very open to that and they want to learn more. Now, <clears throat> let's look at Gen X's. When they leave their roles, the main reasons they do that is that lack of work-life balance, or maybe they're working excessive overtime. Uh, you're not offering remote or hybrid working. Um, it really, like I said before, like I've been saying, they really like that balance. Um, and it really, when they're looking for work, it's a key requirement for the role. That's on top of their list. Um, they, they've decided there may have been a time when they uh, worked at toxic work cultures, but now they want to feel valued and they want to be in a positive work culture. And they do not like being passed over for promotions, especially several times. Um, I think they feel taken for granted when that happens. And Gen X's are in an opportunity decade. They really have that experience, um, but their children are growing up. They're getting closer to adulthood, so they want new opportunities. Um, they, they, they want, they're looking for something, they're looking for some change. So um, if you can provide that for them, um, that, that is something they're really looking for. They really do hold a company's intellectual capital. So they need to be uh, nurtured and engaged. So don't overlook them. Uh, sometimes they're looked at as the neglected middle child, uh, but don't overlook them because businesses sometimes tend to do that. So get the best out of a Gen X. It is essential to meet their needs, especially when, when it comes to management and feedback and communication. Now with healthcare, uh, they're looking for support at it, as it relates to their overall health and well-being so they can continue to care for their kids as they're getting closer to that adulthood. And a lot of times, uh, Gen um, Xers are caring for aging parents. They're looking for those benefits. Okay, let's look at Gen Y. Gen Y, um, those are the millennials. They are uh, shaped by um, the terrorist attacks, PlayStation, social media, invasion of Iraq. Uh, Google was big when they were out, and tablets and smartphones were big. They were about 50% of the workforce now, and they're no, they're no longer the new kid on the block. They have changed the leadership game, and these changes are permanent, and they've altered expectations at work. So as Gen Zers, they are kind of given the voices to things that Gen Zers were wanting to say. There's no longer, people are going for paychecks. They want purpose out of that. And millennials started all of that. Uh, they want meanings in their job. They want to be coached. That's a big thing now for millennials and for uh, everybody else in the, in the generation. So it's not just about your job because we spend a lot of time at your at our job. Um, it's about the whole life, your whole life. It's about building on people's strengths. And millennials are asking, as with anyone else, is this a place where I want to work? A place where I can be my best? So um, similar to Gen X and feedback, they want a lot. They want feedback. They want confirmation of a job well done. 
Um, so ongoing feedback is really good with them. If it's not being given to them, they're going to ask for it. And you need to provide specific examples, things that they can really truly feel like um, are genuine. Um, if you don't have any complaints, just go ahead and tell them that too as well. Um, Millennials' communication style tends to be very informal. So call, calling is fine, but text and email are all acceptable forms of communication. But they're not real big on sending a written memo. Uh, they grew up in the technical revolution. They value work-life balance as all, also. They seek purpose in their careers, and they're very digitally, they're very digi digitally adept. Uh, open communication is so important to them. They like platforms like messaging apps, emails, social media. They appreciate recognition for their contributions. They really enjoy opportunities for, for growth. Now, millennials want that purpose-driven company, a clear purpose that enables them to make a difference. Um, build a career want to build a career even so they've kind of come into that okay I want to build a career but I'm okay with working long hours if I'm going to be able to do that uh, sometimes even neglecting their work-life balance uh, needs Give them reward and praise and feedback this is so important for collaboration with them um, be flexible uh, work collaboratively they want to see um, they want to know what their role is and they want to be in teams that, um, that can collaborate with them. They want collaboration in the teams that they're working in. They want competitive and fair conversations. Um, they are looking for further development, new experiences, good working environments where those colleagues share their passion and interest. Um, to lead millennials, demonstrate a clear vision and purpose. Create a flexible, inclusive, and diverse. And this is the first generation that are looking for psychologically safe cultures. They're very focused on their mental health. Tap into their passions and provide them with stretch projects to keep them stimulated. They really want to have a passion in their jobs. Um, Make it easy for them to have their say and contribute their ideas. Uh, recognize them through rewards and praise. Demonstrate genuine care. They can see through it if it's not genuine um, for them, if you don't have that genuine care for them. Um, millennials leave a lot of times because employers aren't meeting their expectations around their career opportunities and their, their development. Um, they leave failing to provide the working environment that they're looking for, that employers don't provide that, that culture and that flexibility. Um, if employers are solely focused on their own good rather than the millennials' values and purposes they'll leave, um, as a leaders, we want to keep them motivated and engaged. So commit to DEI diversity that's very important to them they will even um, decide which job to take depending on their diversity programs Op optimize technology use technical tools they like to engage with their team members uh, with digital collaboration tools and project management software and provide plenty of feedback you need to hear it all the time Adopt the flexible leadership style. Uh, look, inspire them. Millennials are looking for leaders who are going to inspire them and help them find better ways to do things rather than micromanage. Healthcare, they know they are looking for the important, they are, they are looking for healthcare that provides that behavioral health support and resources. They have children and are at childbearing age, so they're looking for maternity care programs that go beyond pregnancy and birth, and they want access to pediatricians and other family support. Um, okay, so the Gen Zs, these are our Zoomers. Now, they've been affected by life after 9 one 
the economic downturn, global warming, mobile, mobile devices. Um, they are the most diverse generation yet. They're the only generation with no specific pre-smartphone memories. Gen Z's only know fast paced short term, shorting their time frame for anticipating results. Um, they're used to upgrades, new upgrades, new apps, expecting to make change to the better version that becomes available. Two thirds of Gen Z's need feedback from supervisors at least every few weeks. Um, <clears throat> They are more aware than older employees of shifting roles and upscaling selling requirements, um, the benefits of multiple income streams. So many of them are doing a couple of jobs. Technology plays a huge role in their lives. Um, actually, 31% would be uncomfortable away from their phones in 30 minutes or less was surveyed and that was found out. Um, they are. They are actually the true digital natives with different perspectives about privacy and their digital lives. They are accustomed to on-demand everything with countless apps to help them be effective. And they're not, they're not really, they don't really understand the hierarchy, high R P between generations as employees. They expect to participate actively. They they question the norms. They want to be listened to and have their contributions as well. So they don't really get that that um, that that um, a leadership uh, model. They want purpose driven companies that enable them to make a difference. They want to be well paid for their work. They want to be supported, especially around mental health, good good work life balance. They want to be able to work flexible from wherever they are and have that mix of human and digital interactions. One very important thing for collaboration is to understand how they interpret silence. Uh, they expect to hear from managers on a regular basis, and if they don't, they think something is wrong. Uh, as I said, diversity, equity, inclusion is very important to them, career growth. Um, they demand that companies they work for are driven by purpose around climate change and ethical behavior. Uh, they're more motivated by one, uh, money than the millennials. They want to do go good and they want to earn good wages. So encourage innovation with them. Lead by example. Understand their needs. Provide growth opportunities and leverage their desire for change. Healthcare, they're generally healthy, so they only engage in the health care system when needed. They like the digital tools for their health care. Uh, virtual or other convenient care options are important to them. Um, and uh, health care, so health care is minimum for them at this point. Alphas, so alphas are the largest, um, they are looking um, for an immersed in a world of advanced top te technology. They're shaped by AI. They're going to be the most digital generation. They're definitely going to need mentors because they don't understand that traditional way of, um, of working in a workforce. So set clear boundaries for them um, and evaluate them and, and stay in touch with them all the t uh, most of the time. So that kind of concludes that. I thank you so much for being here. And um, if there's any questions, let me know. I apologize for one, running a little bit behind on the time. But if you have any questions, feel free to contact me as well. Hi, thank you so much. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. For some reason, we, I lost your pr presentation. I can't see it anymore, um, but but that's okay. Thank you so much, Shanna. If anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to put that in the chat function or the questions box. I don't see anything coming in. We definitely appreciate uh, you tuning in um, this morning with us. And um, like we said, thank you. And we hope you join us for the rest of our webinar series this year. Everybody have a great rest of your day.
Thank you, Erin. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. You too.